Welcome back. Welcome back to our 10th episode of Frog Errant, the mouse resistor system using the Frog Errant solo supplement. Frog Errant being written by Matthew Morris and mouse resistor written by Isaac Williams. Uh, I'm trying something different today. Put up my green screen. I haven't used this since Halloween of last year. I thought I'd see if I could work a bit better. Now I have brighter lights, it might actually work nicer. If you are a new visitor to, uh, in, you know, curious about Frog Errant and Mouse Ritter, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us. You have nine other episodes of the Adventures of Salamarak that you can explore uh, and many other games as well that I've been playing uh, all solo. Uh, if you're a reoccurring visitor, thank you very much for returning. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying what you're seeing. If you are a subscriber, you are most, most, most appreciated. Thank you very much indeed. If you haven't subscribed yet, please give it a go. If you like what you're seeing, please hit the thumb. And if you have any comments about anything that's been done, uh, please just put them down and we can have a discussion about it. So, how we left Salamarak. Salamarak had just gone through Old Crag Farm and had successfully defeated the and captured uh, multiple of the special agents of the Fairy Queen uh, and brought them in to Below the Tree for Justice. Uh, Salamarak had discovered a portal that allowed short trip travel uh, between a couple of sectors. Uh, he also had met an owl who had given him some information about some other portals. Uh, and basically it was, it was quite a, 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 an adventurous adventure. He, he uh, collected enough treasure to bring back. And so what I've done is he has spent his experience points because he's completed three quests now, he can have three feats. So he has the quick draw feat, which allows him to always go first in combat. He is a weapon master, which increases the damage by one dice of whatever weapon he's wielding. So his D6 sword becomes a D8 sword. If he was to wield it two-handed, it would become a D10 sword. And he has the, still has, the big game hunter feat, which means that he can uh, land blows on a war band as a size creature, as though he was a warband himself. Uh, because he's donated all of his stuff, all of his treasure that he returns with, he's donated everything to Below the Tree. He has no money uh, to speak of himself. He has, I've said that basically the, the Am I so Below the Tree a happy, more than happy Salamarak to repair all of your equipment to re-give you rations and to give you new torches. Thank you so much, Salamarak. Let's go have some beers. We're rich. Uh, and we then finished off by saying that Uther, Knight Commander of Below the Tree, had given Salamarak a new quest, which I've written down, meet a ghost and free its spirit. Now, over the last week, I was thinking, because I have purchased, uh, which, Fernando? Fernando, Fernando suggested I've purchased uh, Kiwi Acres, the campaign guide and the adventure book, which is on sale through drive Through RPG. Now, I will mention this now. I purchased it using, <laughs> I was quite surprised to find out, affiliate money from people who have clicked the links within these videos and the descriptions and, and bought things drive. So thank you so, 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 so much. Uh, I was able to get both with, with the affiliate money and that was awesome. Thank you so much. I, I felt quite special. Thank you. Uh, and so what we might do is we might have that whole thought of Salamarak moving on with his adventures to New Zealand and then we can explore those two books. Uh, which, but I need time to read them. So what I thought today is instead of Salamarak going off to free the ghost, which would be quite interesting in fighting a ghost. He does have a silver weapon. Ghosts need to have silver weapons to attack, so that would be interesting. Instead, uh, Uther, Knight Commander, as Salamarak is getting kitted out, so what I'd, I'd even got, given Salamarak a holy symbol, uh, he has a, he was a, I'd even given him a holy symbol because I thought that that might help. He might, we might be able to utilize that and he could ask one of the mice someone I'm asking, of course you can, Salam. Of course, here, have this very, very exquisite holy symbol made out of brass. And he, so that might not be possible because what Uthar, Knight Commander, may say to, to Salamrak is, Salamrak, yes, Knight Commander, Salamrak, 
We have been questioning the fairies that you have brought into justice. Right. Have you, Knight Commander? Oh, yes, Salamrak. Me and the other senior knights have been questioning them, and we have discovered some interesting information. Right. Salamrak. And what would that be, Knight Commander? Salamrak, the fairy queen has moved forwards her plans. Right. I didn't mention I did roll the plans of the Fairy Queen and I rolled a six, which plus the one for endless uh, silver means it gives a seven, which means she progresses two pips, so leaving one pip for leading the settlement into the Feylands. So I equated that to uh, her pro plans have progressed. There is a portal that's opening and thus, so Salamarak, we would task you to return and defeat the Fairy Queen. Ruben. For we know where her base is located. Ruben. And we know she is planning evil deeds. Uh, so, Salamrat will be given the locating, which I don't think worked out that bit yet. So we have our map. Uh, and somewhere here, we would have the Fairy Queen. Now, we would want it in some sort of, so probably, in, in a wooded area where we might have some form of of grotto. Uh, probably, well this one here is near two human parts, so we might be able to have some humans wandering around. So let's put, what was 13? Let's see what 13 is. 13 is, is a forest with a brook. That sounds quite nice, doesn't it? So there's a little forest trickling through with a brook. So in there, there is a fairy grotto. So 13 has a fairy grotto. And within the fairy grotto, where do, what do we find? A fairy queen. So that is 13. So 13 would be our fairy queen. Now I went to the Mouse Ritter uh, resources site, which is also I think linked within the description, and I randomly generated a map. Now I was gonna print it out, but it populates it with all the stuff, and I'd rather we randomly rolled those things using the adventure site stuff. It's, it already does it for you if you're DMing Mouse Ritter, it would be an awesome resource to rely upon. Uh, you are, you, it would then basically generate the adventure site for you on the flyer and you just fill in the details yourself, which is awesome, but it's nice us not knowing what happens in each of the squares before we enter it. Now the only thing is we want is one of them is gonna be the layout which is going to contain the Fairy Queen and we will then battle the Fairy Queen. Now I was also thinking for Salamrak so to go off and defeat the Fairy Queen by himself might be a bit of a big ask. So, Uthar will say, Salamrak, yes, Knight Commander, as you have completed three quests for the Knights of Below the Tree, right. we will endeavor to help you on this very difficult quest right. by assigning you a squire. A squire, Knight Commander? Ruben, you honour me? Yes, we do. And so what we will do is we will, we will assign Salamrak a Toad Shield Bearer. So I believe the Toad Shield Bearer, who looks like this, we will call him Toadney. I just made that up on the fly. You would have never guessed that. Tony. Tony, as in Toad with the knee. On, on the end, T Tony. Uh, Tony will be, I am a young shield bearer, right. and I am eager to help you, Salamrak. Right. I no longer, I do not have the surname, right. but my great great grandfather fought in the many toad wars with Uther, our knight commander. And he bows towards the knight commander. Please allow me right. to serve you, Salamrak. And so, what well, I don't know, I don't know exactly how these work because I didn't really think it through that far. But we will have Salamrak will go off adventuring with Tony, the shield bearer, which means that he gets plus one defense. And I don't know whether Tony gets to fight, but we'll say he does. He can roll, I don't know, like a d4, a d4 or a d6, because he's let's make him roll a d4 and he might get higher. So when Salamrak does his attacks. Salamrak will roll a d8 plus a d4 and whatever's the highest. So we'll give him a d4 as he, as Tony isn't very trained in combat. 
So, Salamrak is going to travel off to Area 13 with Tony. Uh, this is several days later after they've questioned the Fairy Queen, the Fairy Agents to find out more information. The uh, below the tree is now getting a bit full. They, they, they've started to uh, uh, move into the tree, not just below the tree. There are some small huts that are starting to form up above the ground around the base of the tree. And further up the tree, the mice are starting to be a bit interesting and a bit uh, clever about their engineering skills. And the tree itself is starting to become part of a habitat as well. So there are now the above the ground and the below the ground people. So we have been warned by Uther, Knight Commander, that this uh, fairy grotto is underground. Now, I don't know if you remember what our doom was. Our, one of our dooms was it will happen underground. And we also have the doom, human traps will wound you. So we're no longer meeting a ghost and freeing his spirit. That quest has now been removed. Instead, our quest is to defeat the fairy queen, which would be our fourth quest. So Uther will uh, pat Salamarak on the back, wish him luck, and Salamarak will void out to defanquish the Fairy Queen from these realms for the final time and free the mice from the uh, attacks upon their mortal souls that the Fairy Queen has been making, i.e. bribing them with silver to come and be slaves. As uh, Salamarak is getting his gear together, various mice are coming who were part of the war band. So they're coming in, oh Salamarak, here you are off on a voyage of mighty exploration and questing. Yes, my mouse warrior comrade, who both shed blood and sweat with me in the battles against Solomon the Cat. Yes, I did, didn't I? Well, I just thought I'd wish you luck. I'd love to come with you. But we've got some painting in at the moment. We've got painters in doing decorating. And you've got to watch those fellas because they get up to some shifty things. I... I, I totally agree. And then another mouse will come. Ah, Salamrak, I have come to wish you good luck in your current quest to defeat the Fairy Queen for us, mice of below the tree. Ah, oh, thank you, my mouse warrior comrade. Do you come with me? No, no, I slipped over yesterday and hurt my ankle, so I can't come at all. And so on and so on. But the mice are very, very, very proud of their toad uh, knight. Uh, and are wishing him lots of luck and he feels very bolstered and really proud of himself and off Salamarak will go voyaging out towards 13. Perhaps he'll come down here rather than go via the... Oh no, he's going to go via here because if he goes via here, this is... Uh, we might be... This is the human town. This is the rubbish filled human town where Solomon the cat probably still resides. So maybe Salamarak will go via Solomon the cat and go and see if you can find anything out. And then at last, we can have our peril of wanting to go and explore and have a watch of humans, and I can cross that off at last, and we can forget all about that. And hopefully he will not be trapped, but we'll make a roll and see if he, he gets wounded by a trap. So he and Tony will voyage over into the, will spend the day traveling through the trees and the bush, out across a few roads, hopping across, uh, trying to avoid the cars, uh, playing Frogger uh, with live traffic, to come over to uh, the area which is, we, we called uh, Rubbish Town, where Solomon the Cat resided. It will take them a few hours to move in, and they'll, they'll basically, they're gonna attempt to find somewhere to camp in uh, the human town. And Sir Lamarack will spend some time uh, Watching humans, Tony will go, Sir Lamarack, what are we doing? I wonder, for should we not be travelling towards the Fairy Queen? Ah, Tony, as a squire, you do not understand how these things work. What we are doing, oh, look at that one. That one's really tall. Why do they keep their hair so strange? And what we need to, oh, that one over there is carrying bags. I wonder what he's carrying. I could carry bags like that. I'm a bit worried about you. <laughs> I seem to sound almost like a mouse, <laughs> but I am not. I am a young toad. <laughs> well, Tony, 
Let us just stand here. Oh, that one there is getting into something. I think they're called a car. He's driving around. Aren't they interesting? Not particularly. And then they will then go and try and find uh, uh, Solomon. Let's see if they can find Solomon. Uh, let's give, oh, all right, let's, let's reset our pressure point to, it normally starts on a 10. They're quite feeling quite happy. We will set the pressure point at an 11. Uh, and we will ask the uh, Oracle. Oracle, oh, Oracle, answer us true. Is there a cat here named Solomon Do? Uh, his name's not Solomon Do. We will say this is, you got defeated not that long ago. We'll just do a normal one dice. It's not likely or unlikely. So we are saying, is Solomon here? Uh, We've got our pressure point of 11, which means anything under 11 is a yes. 15 is a no. It's four above the pressure point. So that's just a plain no. So three, here we go, I'll show you this. Sorry to, sorry to show off your stuff, Morris, uh, Matthew Morris, but Mr. Morris, sorry, Mr. Morris, don't want to come too familiar. But this is basically the Oracle table. It's quite a nice way of doing oracles, to be honest, I quite like it. So that's a no. So uh, Solomon is nowhere to be found. Uh, his green chair is empty. <laughs> Salamrat will jump up and put his hand on and go, ah, I see he was here quite recently. <laughs> but, and then he'll put his ear to, to, to the chair and go, I cannot hear tracks anywhere nearby. <laughs> I believe he's gone. Oh, Salamrat, I wish I could learn the tracking skills like you have. <laughs> I am but a young squire. And they will spend the night underneath the chair. Maybe they'll camp under the chair and <laughs> see if there's, a, if there's an encounter. No, there is no, no encounters. So uh, on a one, there is an encounter. On a two, there's like a, a signs of an encounter. So it's all you, a brush, a close brush with an encounter. Uh, so nothing really happens. They spend the night under the, tr under the chair. They will, there's not going to be, there's not going to be. I was thinking where could they get more food from, but not from here. So they will consume one lot of rations uh, and then they don't need to consume torches because it's a town and a city, so it's very bright. We will say that he has fulfilled his, what do we call it? I keep forgetting what we call it. He has fulfilled his peril. He has fulfilled his, oh, it's a harrowing experience. He has fulfilled his harrowing experience, which is, you are a human, curse of a frog's life. For D6 weeks, you desire to encounter a giant at any cost. So he has gone off and he has witnessed some, uh, some of the giant human folks. Uh, by the morning of when they wake up, Tony will say, would you like to keep watching <laughs> the big folks, Salamak, or should we move on? No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, to be honest. They're quite strange, the two-legged folks. They can't jump for toffee. Uh, and then they will move off from the town and into, they'll leave the outskirts of the town as they begin to dodge between, uh, uh, let's say, uh, so there's, there's a, will they encounter? So we're gonna take a high because the highest of these two will lean towards a no and we particularly want a no. So will they encounter, uh, will the human spot them as they leave? So the highest is a six, our pressure point is an 11, so that's a yes. So they, they get spotted as they leave and some humans uh, notice them. Uh, maybe there's a small child, a small child is out shopping. <laughs> I'm now thinking Ben and Holly's Magic Kingdom. I'll put a link to Ben and Holly's Magic Kingdom. You should watch Ben and Holly's Magic Kingdom. Uh, the, uh, if you have children, you can pretend you're watching it with the children. Uh, there's a small child notices them uh, as they begin hopping past, wearing all their armor and carrying their shields and stuff. And goes, mum, mum, I think that's a frog knight. Oh, be quiet, dear. It is, look, it is, it is. Look, I'm busy talking here. Look, mum. No, I'm busy talking to Mrs. Miggins. Now leave me alone. Nah and she's gonna watch the uh, the two frogs proceeding away. Oh, that was a close one. And they then voyage out of town. And then within the next few hours, they will then reach the outskirts of the, the uh, 
wooded area, which is number 13, which is the fairy woods, where the fairy grotto is, and the fairy queen resides. And they will come across the entrance of the fairy queen's grotto. The entrance would be guarded, wouldn't it? Would the entrance be guarded? So that's a yes, so we want a low. Is the entrance guarded? Uh, one. <laughs> one is the very much so, isn't it? One. Yes and. Yes, the answer, and it comes with a boon for the plot. Yes, it's guarded. All right, yes, it is guarded, but a boon for the plot. Now, a boon for the plot is Salamaric can get into this really easily. So, the outside is clearly, clearly a fairy grotto. So, Salamaric and, and Tony find it very easy to, to identify where this grotto is because there are strings of tiny little fairy lights uh, hung up within the forest at sort of small animal level, i.e. two, three inches off the ground, all leading towards the centre of the forest. Like all these chains as though like all, Rome, all, all roads lead to Rome, uh, lead into the centre of the grotto. But the, as they get closer to the centre of the grotto, they can hear lots of the fairy voices. Now then, I'm not too sure about this. I think I heard rumours that quite a few of our comrades have been well, captured by the mice and toads. Really? I didn't hear that. Oh, I did. I heard that. And I'm not too sure this is too wise. I've heard that there's a fairy king up north and he's taking in new recruits. We could always go there. Do you know, that doesn't sound too bad. There's a couple of portals that I know of that can get us there quite quickly. That's an awfully good idea. Shall we go? Uh, and they're basically... Uh, so the, that's the boon. There's at least half a dozen of these fairies, all kitted up to the nines. Shiny armor, uh, shiny helms, spears. They're all standing around in a small group near this entrance of this large uh, uh, arch, which is intertwined with uh, roses, tiny, well, big roses actually, intertwined with big roses and big flowers. There's some. Uh, 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 Nice blue flowers, I can't remember what they're called, little flowers, they hang over. Uh, I'll find a picture. Uh, all around this little grotto. Uh, I'll see if GPT can make us a picture of a fairy grotto. Entrance to a fairy grotto, an underground entrance to a fairy grotto, because one of his, it will happen underground. Uh, down underground, and so this park, this uh, stairs that we can see leading down to ground, they're all standing around discussing. Uh, Salamarak is standing out of view uh, with Tony. Let's sit, make Tony make a dex check. Tony has an eight for dex. He's carrying some kit and some equipment. So we will just make a plain uh, dex check for him. 13, he fails. So Tony, who's carrying stuff, drops one of the bags because it's hurting his back and there's a bit of a clutter and all the fairies turn and go, now who's there? And this is where Slamrak will have to step out. So Slamrak will step around, hello there. I am the knight that captured your comrades. Eh, hey, are you? Yes. And I am here to take you all in to justice. Uh, now, Salamarak, his willpower has never gone up and he really needs to get more willpower. I might create a feat for him, uh, like an imposing voice, a teacher voice. He's gonna be a teacher, policeman teacher voice uh, to see if he can then convince people to do things. So. So Lamarack is going to attempt to overpower the will of these uh, fairies and get them to back away and basically go. I advise you to head north to the fairy king. Being here will be very, very bad for your future. And he will put his hand on his sword and step forward, just one foot forward, sort of stepping into a sort of threatening stance. I'm going to give him a, I was going to say a boon, that's Dragon Bane. I'm going to give him an advantage to uh, a will check, which means it's the lowest of these two. Uh, three uh, is nicely below. So a few of the fairies are looking a bit, ah, I'm not too sure about this. this. This may be better off if we were to just go. Let's see what a fairy's will is and we will make them milk up, make a wheel check because this is the whole morale thing. Uh, fairy's wheel is 15. So we will give them a, uh, a, a disadvantage. That's the highest of these. 
Oh, 16. Oh, you lucky fella, Mr. Lamarack. Sorry, sorry, Sir Lamarack. So the fairies uh, en masse look at each other. Do you know, I think that's a great idea. Shall we? Let's. And they all sort of slowly trope off going, good luck. Uh, we'll tell them, <laughs> we'll tell them about the, your brave adventures up north. Uh, and they then sort of move off into the, to, to the forest looking a bit sheepish. Leaving the grotto soon becomes quiet as it's prettily lit and little flower uh, light sparkle and the flowers are over the entrance as Salamarak and Tony will move towards the entrance and stare down into this lit spiral staircase going down towards the underground depths and the grotto of the Fairy Queen. In the future, I'll be able to put all of this into an AI and it will do the whole of this as, a, as an animation. It will be quite amazing future for us all to live through. What a wonderful time to live. Not as wonderful as Salamarax, who will begin to voyage down the stairs. Uh, he doesn't need to light a torch just yet. Where's my tracker? So we will say that we have come into, we'll start, we'll start, it's been noon. They've had dinner, so we've got rations, so they've had something to eat. They're traveling down, he and Tony will be moving into the depths underneath uh, at the beginning of the clock. We'll tick here and we'll track down as we go. There's a possibility that they might encounter wandering people, but it's not a very big, it's not a very big, uh, adventure site. This is actually was randomly generated. It was the first thing I clicked on is for, now what we're gonna imagine is this here is the, I'm gonna to have to see over this one, I can't, I can't write that direction. The entrance is gonna be a spiral stairs that will come down into the middle of this space here. So, let's turn to our adventure site, generating uh, adventure site tools, which are really good. I really like these. They're these, these, and solo define one for uh, Morkborg uh, are really good. So, what's in this room? This is a six. Six comes out as a layer, so we could call it a layer, but we might just say that this is a guard room, which makes sense. Bottom of the stairs, Fairy Queen's Grotto, Fairy Queen's in here somewhere. One of these outer four rooms will contain the Fairy Queen. Uh, we will then do a Oracle roll each time it goes in like we did with the agents. So this is a lair. Uh, we will call this a temporary encampment, which is a one. So we'll automatically do this uh, layer. Are, are there creatures in here? On a one, two, three, four, or five, there are creatures. Yep, so we're gonna say those are fairy guards. Are there treasure? On a one to four, there's treasure. Nope, there's no treasure. So we will have some fairy guards. Let's have two, two fairy guards. Salamarak can take on two guards, can't he? He's got a shield bearer with him. Uh, we will have two fairy guards are sitting there uh, having a chat and maybe sitting, they're having tea. They're having, because we've, we've done all these fairies as being quite, apart from that first one that you met in the woods, it was a bit of a rough fairy. All the rest of them are given quite, quite pleasant voices. So they're sitting there having tea with tiny, 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 tiny little teacups. Uh, dollhouse, they've gone to a, obviously they must have raided the dollhouse for the fairy queen. They've got tiny little teacups, uh, Sylvanian family uh, teacups and a tea set and they're drinking tea. Now, this garden lark, lark is quite fun, isn't it? Do you know we hardly ever get bothered uh, as Salamrak comes down the stairs. Now he automatically now has, he's got the high deck so he starts a fight but can he sneak down the stairs? He's got a dexterity of 15 now. He has a dexterity and a strength of 15. I'd altered the running total, but I hadn't altered his uh, normal total. So he needs to roll with disadvantage because he's wearing lots of armor under 15. Uh, disadvantage is the highest, so that's a 10, so that's a success. So he gets to the bottom of the stairs as they're, they're sitting there drinking tea. So we can imagine this as a circular room uh, although it's been carved uh, under the ground, they've got various different pictures up on the wall, some paintings, uh, various different uh, uh, blankets and tapestries hang from the wall, covering up the earth and where rock wall. The ground has been covered in, let's imagine something shiny. So something shiny, small, shiny. Oh, uh, various different uh, beads from uh, children's bracelets 
those little plasticky beads with the holes. They've all been pushed into the ground to create a, a very shiny surface on the ground, uh, but it looks quite uh, attractive. And there's some Sylvania uh, family uh, furniture, which is uh, around the room, dispersed around the room to allow the uh, fairy guards to have a pleasant time as they sit guarding the entrance to the fairy, goth fairy queen's grotto. So Salamrat will step in and the guards will go, oh, oh, didn't anyone up the top stop you? No, I have defeated them all in mortal combat. So he is again gonna attempt to overpower them with wheel which is part of this because in the actual morale rules, we do have that it's obviously they're outmatched at the start of the battle. So he's going to attempt to, to overpower them. We'll just do a straight roll to see if these two fairies will look at each other and just decide they're overpowered. Remember they have a wheel of 15. 15 exactly. Do you need to roll under? I think normally I, I allow Salamarak to get a 15. All right, we're going to say that Salamarak, uh, one of the one of the fairies is going to go and the other fairy will stay. Salamarak will then get a chance to try and make a wheel check because he goes first. But if he if he doesn't get underneath his wheel on a straight roll, then that fairy will attack and Salamarak doesn't get to do the like. So Salamarak will use his dexterity advantage to basically attempt to overpower the, this fairy and get the fairy to go. So one of the fairy goes, do you know what, Simon? What, what What's that? Tamsin. I'm off. Uh, and one goes, flitters up the spiral stairs and, and the other fairy will step forward drawing a silver rapier and Salamrak will then say, I'm going to bash you if you don't go. That's not very eloquent, is it? And so the fairy will lunge forward with its rapier. Then a fairy's rapier, I believe, is a D8 weapon. It is silver rapier, D8. So the fairy would lunge forwards with its D8. I've got some fairy stats written down somewhere. Here they are. Uh, it has six hit points, a 10 strength. So the fairy will lunge forward, doing five points, knocked down by, so uh, Tony will move his shield into the way. So Lamarack has his armor and a shield, so that's four, meaning one point will go through and nick Salamarak's face. Uh, taking him from his 13 hit points down to 12 hit points. So Lamarack and Tony uh, will then both stare at each other. I'm afraid, Tony, you're going to have to fight. That's okay, Salamarack. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we have a one and a seven. The seven means that Salamarack strides forwards, pummels the fairy on top of the head, takes his legs out from under him, the fairy falls down, losing all of his hit points and dropping his strength from 10 to nine, thus needing to make a strength check, 18, failing, and the fairy will have twisted his ankle when he goes down and go, oh dear me, dear me indeed, I really should have listened to Tamsin and just left. Uh, Salamarak will now bind this fairy to the chair uh, and leave the fairy bound to the chair and gagged. <laughs> and Salamrak will now decide where to go next. Now, each there's a tunnel coming out of each of these leading to a separate room. One of these is the fairy queen's lair and the others will be other things. Uh, we will, how will we decide if the fairy queen's lair? We will drop our pressure point from 11 to 10 as it's things are starting to heat up as the quest is continuing. So we now have, we, uh, Salamrak will voyage north into this area. Now as Salamrak moves through this winding tunnel with roots coming through, various different things are being hung onto the roots to make it look pretty and make it look exquisite. He still can't tell what's coming through. So we will ask our Oracle, is this the Fairy Queen's Lair? We have a pressure point of 10 at this point, it's unlikely that the first thing he moves into is the, the layer. So we are taking the highest of these. The highest of these is an eight, which is still below the our 10, which means yes, yes, but. Yes, however, a toned down outcome, something else occurs. Ooh, okay. So 
Uh, Salamax drives through. This room is exquisite. It is shiny, it is glittery, it is silver and gold. There are gemstones, real gemstones, as far as Salamarak can tell, that have been pushed into the walls. The walls are basically lined with gems. The floor is lined with rings and coins and various things to make a very shiny gold and silver floor. And the walls, so uh, pound coins are like a gold color. They've been embedded and there's very shiny 50p pieces. They're, the 50p is still a thing. I haven't been in England in ages. I'm going this year. Uh, first time in 20 odd years, I left. When did I leave? No, more than 20, 22 years. I left England in 2002. I haven't even been back since. I'm going this year. Uh, 50p pieces into the ground and to the side, to the back, there is a large throne that has been made out of uh, various pieces of wire and silver wire and gold and, and jewelry wire around. And in this room, there are a D4 guards. Four guards, four guards, <laughs> four guards. Stand in this room and the fairy queen sits upon the throne. Uh, I assume you are one of the knights. Yes, I assume you are the fairy queen. Oh, bright lad, aren't you? Yes, I am the fairy queen. And you are here to to bring you to justice, your majesty. Oh, at least you have respect. And how do you intend on doing that? By taking you by force if necessary. And this is where the four guards will step forwards. Now, I don't think they are going to feel like they are out overpowered by Salamarak. And Salamarak is going to be a bit worried about this as well. And Tony will go, Salamarak! Are we sure? Yes, Tony, we are very sure. Uh, so Salamarak will step forwards as the four guards step forwards. Now Salamarak does have his dex advantage, which means that he won't try and talk his way out of this one. Salamarak is going to stride in with Tony. So we've got four fairies and a fairy queen. And the fairy queen will stay seated for now as Salamarak is going to move forwards for these guards. The guards are going to pair out and go two aside, and they obviously know what they're doing and step in on either side of Salamarak, attempting to flank Salamarak. Salamarak will then move forwards with his shield, trying to keep himself squared away as Tony is going to cover his other flank with shield, and Salamarak will move in and attempt to strike one of the, the fairies in front of him. Oh, if I roll an eight, I know what I'm gonna say. No, a four. So Tony is still not as effective, rolling a two. Salamarak rolling four, that fairy that he hits, is struck to the shoulder and steps back a bit. And as he does that, there's a flurry of silver uh, as the, the, I've only got two D8s, so we'll have to roll it twice. As all four of the, the fairy guards attack at once, uh, we've got an eight, so we'll call that eight as the maximum, which means that with our four defense, four points go through against Salamarak, moving Salamarak to eight hit points. Salamarak has now knocked back a bit. He's, he's come back from being striding into the middle of the room, coming back. The Fairy Queen will stand and say, I warn you, Sir Knight, we will not allow you to leave here alive. Uh, as Salamarak and Tony will now rally themselves and attempt to move forwards, taking on one of the guards. This would be a different guard. Uh, Salamarak squares to the other side as Tony moves around to cover his other flank. They keep on moving so as these guards don't know what they're doing. Oh, Salamarak, you're letting the side down. The guards are just too, too light of foot as they move uh, dodging and attacking Salamarak and Tony. And Salamarak can only get a glancing blow on one of the fairies. That's a six, is our for high so far. A uh, six, two points go through. So Salamarak is caught again across the cheek. Uh, he really needs to get himself a full face helm. As a, sli a rapier slice cuts across his cheek and one of the fairies begins to laugh. I have bled of toad. Uh, and the fairy queen then stands again. I warn you, Sir Knight, you will be killed. Uh, Salamarak and Tony are now really a bit worried, but they are gonna attempt to see if they can take out a different guard this time and then start cleaning up. Six, six takes that down to a zero hit point guard. So that guard is looking a bit worried and will step back from the fight just slightly. So we'll only roll three D8s for their goal this, there you go, this time. 
Oh, not a high again, please. A twos, all the twos, twosy twos, and a four. So this, because that guard has stepped out, one strided in and attempt to attack with a flurry of blows, but both Tony and uh, Salamrak join their shields together, defending against those that flurry of blows as it comes in. Salamrak will now turn to, let's see if we can, if we can get two of these fairies out, then the other two might re retreat because they've heard rumors, even though there's the fairy queen is here. So Salamrak and Tony really are starting to worry now. They're gonna start trying to move around the room to get a bit closer to the Fairy Queen. Uh, the guards are gonna to attempt to stop them. So Salamrak is gonna go really for, he could drop his shield. He could drop his shield at this point and use two hands on that sword and then he would take that D8 to a D10. So it reduces their defense to three, but it means that he does have a chance of putting, putting one of these out. So he will then stride towards the uninjured Fairy, uh, doing seven points. Uh, which will take it down to a minus, one minus on its strength being nine, which means it needs to make, make a strength check. 16, failing. Uh, Salamrak has, has dropped his shield, charged in, bashed one of the, the fairies into the chest, knocked it against the wall, crippling its wings uh, and sending it sliding down the wall, cutting itself against some of those jewel, jewels that have been embedded into the wall, landing on the ground, uh, it begins to pant and a small silver shiny tear runs down its cheek. As Salamrak then turns to the other three, come on then, uh, and two of them will step forward because that one is still injured, we'll say that he's still rallying himself. Four points, which means one point goes through because his defense have been lowered. So uh, Salamrak didn't notice that one of the, the guards has snuck around him uh, and he's coming into attack. Oh, his prowess. Should have returned to four as well. I had it down to zero because he used it all up last, last session. Uh, he's going to start using that in a minute. He then will, he and Tony, so what have we gone? We're a D10 and a D4, uh, are going to stride in as that one that was injured rallies himself and then comes back into the fight. And they will go against the most uh, sprightly looking of the fairies, who's got four hit points. Uh, doing the four hit points necessary to take that down to zero. That fairy will then back out of the fight for a bit, meaning that there are two fairies left to come in and attack Salamrak. Salamrak is actually going to burn one of his prowess uh, and say that they, they don't do any damage against him uh, on this turn. So those fairies, there's a huge flurry of blows. Salamrak is defending with his sword. Tony's defending with his shield. Uh, and everything, uh, they don't do any damage against Salamarak and Tony, which gives Salamarak and Tony a chance to come and attack. Two of the fairies are on zero hit points. They're gonna, um, they're gonna attack the fairy who's on two hit points. If they can knock that fairy out of the fight, then all these fairy guards are going to just run for their lives. Ooh, two hit points isn't enough. That drops it down to zero. All the fairies are on zero hit points. Only one fairy is, still, is not rallying. It will then stride into attack. Three points is defended against. This battle is now going on. They're all looking tired. They're all looking injured. Salamarak has got cuts covering all over his face, uh, all over his hands as the rapiers have been slashing against him. All of the fairy guards are panting and looking as though they've had enough. As Salamarak will then stand there and say, now I would advise you to run. Uh, and he will come charging in. Now, if he can, all he needs to do is do at least, well, let's see, if he will charge in and go and attack one of the fairies. They're all on zero hit points. They've all got 10 strength left. He does 10 points of damage, which is going to mean one of those zero, one of those fairies gets down to zero strength. So instead, what we'll say is Salamrak then does a massively roaring, belchy, toad-sounding battle cry and charges into the fairies as the fairies then drop all of their rapiers and then scatter, grabbing their fallen comrade and running from the room, leaving the fairy queen standing there looking a bit miffed that her highly trained, what were the, the, the emperor's guard, what were they called? I can't remember. Anyway, their highly trained guard, uh, her, her highly trained guard has just run for the, run for the winds. Uh, as Salamrak will stand before her, panting, Tony will hand Salamrak his shield 
and Salamak will, will say, Fairy Queen, now you come with me. Now, Salamak, I don't think so. Now, what we will do is, though he has that feat, which means that he goes first, we are going to give the Queen an opportunity to go first because what I want the Queen to do is create her final portal because she has one portal left as a resource because we got rid of two hidden hidden roads and portals she has one left this portal is going to go somewhere a long way away if she can do it otherwise it won't work but I'd like it to end that way so a theory what is a fairy's dexterity a fairy's dexterity is 15 I am giving her an advantage because I, I want her to succeed. If she can roll under 15 with advantage, uh, she has, because she rolled an 18, but a seven. So she gets under it, then she can get to go first. So Salamarak will then get to have a disadvantage. To, no, Salamarak can just have a plain dex check to see if he can stop her from conjuring a spell, which would be a portal spell. I wonder if there are such things as portal spells. Not that I can see. Anyway, can Salamarak stop her 16 16 is one more than his 15 salamrak is slow so close she begins to mount, uh, manifest some words so he can see a shimmering that appears behind her as she begins to manifest various different words and magic certain magics uh, and i wonder if tony will go with him shall tony go with him to new zealand this is where the portal is going portal is going to go to new zealand uh, as it worked out seem to work out perfectly. So the portal will manifest behind the Fairy Queen. The Fairy Queen will say, I shall see you some other time, Salamarak. Well done, you seem to have defeated me. And she will step back through the portal and it will shimmer and it will begin to close. As it begins to close, Salamarak goes, follow me, Tony, we voyage forwards. And he will rush into the portal uh, as Tony will look a bit bewildered, but he doesn't know what else to do, as he is a squire. Tony will follow Salamarak through the portal, and the sit the the uh, that is Australia. I will do. <laughs> and our uh, series will end uh, with Salamarak reappearing on the other side in a countryside which looks similar but a bit different, uh, almost like Gandalf or a bunch of hobbits would just wander past, uh, and a. <laughs> A small animal that Salamrak has never seen before turns and goes, Oh dear Cobba, what are you doing here? Uh, this one's on holiday from, uh, from Australia because that's not a New Zealand accent by any stretch of imagination. And Salamrak finds himself in New Zealand. And that is where we will end for these, this series of uh, Frog Errant and played using the Mouse Ritter rules. Uh, thank you so much for watching we will have a bit of a pause and i'll play something else for a bit uh and then we will return to see how salamarak deals with being in new zealand and that series uh, could be salamarak attempting to find his way back to below the tree uh and return to uthar knight commander uh, i don't know how we'll do it i just kind of made it up just before just before i started i thought oh that would be a nice way to end so thank you very much for watching Thank you for being here for the last 10 sessions of the Adventures of Sir Alamarak. Thank you to Matthew Morris for writing Frog Aaron. It's awesome, very much enjoyed, and I'm looking forward to doing the next series of episodes. Thank you very much to Isaac Williams for Mouse Ritter, outstandingly uh, evocative setting. Thank you very much to the whole of the Mouse Ritter community for all the stuff that you have created to help anyone play Mouse Ritter and enjoy the world of being a tiny little mouse. And thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing if you're subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel. Uh, if you liked, please hit the thumb to say you like. If you have any comments, please put the comments in. And at some point, I'll put up a poll to see whether people want me to do this again, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because I quite enjoy it. Uh, as whatever we do with this the hobby, we should be enjoying it as we do it. I will see you all very soon for another game of something. See ya.